Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. It's gonna be a different type of video because we're not gonna be speaking about or handling a really uh, example, a real example of Power Pivot or Power Query. In this case, I wanted to take this time to talk to you about the evolution of Power BI and how it has actually changed within the past few years. Now, as you can see on the screen, I have all three official logos that Power BI has had uh, for the past few years. Uh, you notice how it actually started with the green, which I was, was specifically the Excel green. Then it changed to this light yellow, and now it's actually a golden yellow, a darker yellow, and it is now not uh, a bar chart with an angle, it's just a straight 2D uh, plane and front visual of a bar chart, uh, which is similar to the logo that you have for Power Apps, if you actually tried that before. So we're not here to talk about logos, but we know we now know what they actually looked like and what is the official logo that Power BI has now. But I wanted to speak to you about the evolution of Power BI, I don't know how it can it had actually changed within the past few years. Now, I'm going to speak to you about the version that was released around 2015, or that was uh, in production, or that was general release, or basically the official version between the years of 2014 and 2015, and it remained available for a few customers all the way to 2016, and it was completely based in Excel. So, uh, you needed to use Excel, at least Excel 2013, you needed to use Power Pivot, Power Query, and if you wanted to, you could actually use something that was called Power View, which you use uh, a technology called Silverlight, uh, which is something that we no longer use. Uh, and this was the first time that you were able to create your reports, everything in just Excel, and then publish it to the service provided by Microsoft. Before Power BI, you needed to actually buy your own SharePoint server, uh, install it on-premise, spend hundreds of thousands of hours trying to set that up for your whole organization. And well, it was a really big investment, not just in time, but also in money. So Power BI came for uh, small to medium companies, basically for uh, teams that needed to have this repository of reports or dashboards where they can just access it whenever they actually want it. Again, this was all built on top of Excel, so it used Excel services. And back then, if you wanted to use Excel services, you also needed to use SharePoint Online. So that's one of the few reasons why it didn't completely work because you needed to have a SharePoint Online license and then as an adding to SharePoint, you could actually get the Power BI. One of the key features of this version is that it brought the first time, it was the first time that we actually saw the Q&A, what we know now as the natural language query, which is what you're actually seeing on the screen uh, on an infinite loop. You were able to just ask the questions that you that you actually had against your data and then get the response as a chart or even as a few numbers uh, depending on the response that you were requesting. So that was probably one of the bigger benefits from Power BI back then. It had this uh, natural language query that nobody else had. Uh, even now, uh, not that many people can actually say that they have natural language query, to my knowledge. Uh, well, yeah, this was all on top of Excel. Uh, you needed SharePoint, you needed to have this add-in, and everyone in your organization needed to have a license so they can actually see the reports. So that's one thing. I'm going to now go to basically Power BI B2, and this was a whole new version of Power BI. This one didn't need... Uh, the actual license for SharePoint Online, so you could actually get it however you want it as, a, as an actual standalone license. Uh, no longer relied solely on Excel, 
you can now use, or back then you can actually use, uh, which is uh, called the Power BI Desktop. Back then it was the Power BI Designer initially. Uh, then it changed to the Power BI Desktop. It didn't use the Power BI, sorry, the Power BI uh, visualization engine. It actually switched to a new one but it, will, it actually supported a few of the images or the charts that were created in Power View reports. So they actually changed a lot and everything felt different. It was like a whole new product. And as you can see on screen, uh, even the dashboard, even the whole experience look way cleaner, just right into the data and you didn't just have to use uh, Excel. You could actually use uh, another completely free tool and just create the reports. And now you can actually create uh, dashboards, which is exactly what you're seeing on screen, which is different from creating the reports through the Power BI desktop. Something else that they actually added was mobile apps. They also had, uh, and what we are actually accustomed to now, is that if you wanted to add new custom visualizations, you're actually able to do so. You can also add uh, pretty much any visualizations that you want. You can create uh, basically new visualizations with R. You have new connectors, so many data sources that didn't exist in Power BI B1 are actually now available. And this is more similar to what we know now as Power BI, but recently there were some major changes. So not only for the branding, the, this new logo that you see on screen, it started uh, showing up since early January of this year, I believe. And they added new things or new products or features since June 1st of this year, 2017. So now they have uh, or they're going to launch the Power BI Premium, which is going to come with the new Power BI report server. So you can actually have uh, your report server, your Power BI reports on premise, not actually on online. You can actually have it on your own premise and you can actually also publish it to the web if you wanted to. There's also the Power BI or, or Power Query SDK. So you can create your own custom connectors. Uh, the one that I've seen before for YouTube Analytics that I've created. But this also come with no not only new features and new additions, but it actually came with a few changes. And, and there were some major changes to the license uh, that we were used to. So back with uh, Power BI B2, we were able to share dashboards uh, with free licenses. But now with the Power BI B 2.5, which is what I'm calling it, it's not the official name, uh, we are not able to uh, share dashboards if we have a Power BI free account. We will need to have a Power BI Pro account so we can actually share and consume data that is being shared to us. There's also a change in content packs. Uh, content packs will be, uh, be changing and they will be also called apps. So app workspaces is a new term that we'll be uh, handling now instead of content packs, uh, which will actually give us further uh, tools to actually create this uh, reports and dashboards that we can easily share or distribute with people in our organization. So those are the three phases that we have with Power BI. It started back with just Excel uh, then it changed to Excel and Power BI Desktop. And now we can have uh, way more than just uh, Power BI Desktop. Uh, we can also have analysis services. We can have direct connectivity with uh, uh, this data sources that we have. Uh, it can be actually be SQL Server, Oracle, you name it. Even if it's actually not there listed, we are now able to create our own connectors that can also be, uh, we can also have direct query or direct connectivity in real time. So this is the new Power BI B2.5. Uh, there's a lot of changes, uh, but they are for the best. 
So there are new additions, and the actual changes that are, are probably more impactful were the changes to the licenses and how uh, free users or Power BI free licenses are now no longer able to uh, share the content or consume the content that uh, was previously uh, shared with them. So that's one thing. And also I wanted to uh, take this uh, time if you're actually in the Seattle or you're actually going to the Data Summit, uh, you can also talk directly with the Microsoft staff about the upcoming changes because there are coming a lot of features, new features, really amazing features like incremental updates and so forth that are probably going to start with the Power BI Premium. But if we actually uh, speak to them and use the user voice that they actually have, maybe we can actually have those features as well for the Power BI Pro licenses. And maybe uh, if they will actually take in consideration creating a new type of license uh, that can actually be like a Power BI Pro Lite. But in essence, every discussion that will probably happen in the Microsoft Data Insights Summit is probably going to be around uh, Power BI and the vision or the roadmap that they're going to have for the next uh, few months. Anyway, that's going to be all for this take on the evolution of Power BI. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to update this video in a few months once we actually have new information about this current uh, stage or state of Power BI. And I'll let you guys know what has changed and what new features you should be looking out for. Uh, and that's it. Thank you.